हेलो एंड वेलकम फ्रेंड्स दिस इज सम इंट्रोडक्टरी मॉड्यूल रिलेटेड विद एयर पोल्यूटेंट्स इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड द बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ एयर पोल्यूशन इन दिस वील डिस्कस अबाउट द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एयर पोल्यूटेंट their classifications meaning of source inventory and emission factors and its application so as you learn the content you will be able to explain the nature of the pollutants and their classification and also state the significance of source inventory as we discussed in the last lecture the earth's atmosphere comprises mainly of nitrogen oxygen argon certain trace gases like hydrogen neon helium methane carbon dioxide that too in certain percentages as well we also discussed about the definition of the air pollution that is the presence of the contaminant with such a quantity and with a such a quality for such a duration which would cause the harm or which would tend to cause the harm not only for the human life but also for the property animal as well as plant whenever we are trying to discuss about the air pollutant the entire discussion we must have in light of the background i mentioned so anything other than the expected content of the ambient atmosphere will be nothing but air pollutant at this particular instant only let's make clear one thing that as we try to emphasize on the percentage say for example if we think about the carbon dioxide 0.38% carbon dioxide is it contaminant yes it is contaminant but it will be contaminant if it is exceeding its level of 0.38% this particular 0.38% is important for all living beings for plant life for animal life in order to sustain the relationship among the spheres that we discussed about the atmosphere that we live in will be bearing certain specific characteristic it will be bearing certain specific temperature only with the presence of the ozone layer only because of the heating effect of that particular carbon layer presence of the water vapor hence the importance of the discussion that we had in the last lecture so this air pollutant is a substance or a effect which could be dwelling temporarily or it could be permanently in the air which adversely alters the environment so this line is very important which is adverse alteration of the environment this could be reflected through the interference with the health comfort as well as effect on the food chain or the loss of the property value and such things this substance could be present in various forms like dust fumes mist etc however as you see it is specifically mentioning that uncombined water vapor is not included in the list of air pollutants in fact as we learn further and you could be knowing that water vapor is one of the major reasons 
which is contributing for the global headache. However, as we consider the presence of the water vapor, it has got certain inherent property to change its form. That is, this could enhance the temperature as well as the temperature brought down it could also be getting condensed and accordingly it may be a cause to enhance the heat as well as to reduce the heat the effect of which could be nullifying with each other more about this in some other lecture however here what i tried to mention is we are not including uncombined water vapor in the least of these air pollutants as you see in the terms that are used dust fumes mist liquid hence it could be in solid form liquid form or it could also be in gases form also as we consider the range it could be coarser in nature or it could also be submolecular as far as its size is concerned this pollutant may originate from natural or man made activities or combination of natural and man made activities however as we think about the natural sources say for example if you think effect of the volcano if you think about the contribution of sea ocean it is quite limited to its extent and the nature has got capability to take care of the pollution induced by it and hence we need not bother about this particular say natural contribution unless it is disaster and of course this disaster is also has got the background of anthropogenic activities again as we move ahead the meaning of these particular terms would be more clear to you however as far as this particular air pollution is concerned we have to concentrate on the pollutants that are being emitted because of the man made activities and their effects so as you see on this particular rightward sketch there could be certain say natural contributors in the form of volcano forest fire desert ocean spray and such things there could be certain stationary pollutants there could be certain stationary sources there could be certain mobile sources and accordingly they would be emitting certain pollutants directly from their identified source as such here as you see carbon monoxide carbon dioxide oxides of the sulfur oxides of the nitrogen many hydrocarbons and even the suspended particulate matter can be considered to be particulate matter however as they enter into the atmosphere they would be going through lot many reactions with each other there could be nucleation absorption adsorption coagulation as such as these particular primary pollutants enter in the atmosphere they won't retain their form as it is but they will be reacting with each other in the presence of the sunlight and they will produce some additional pollutants which would be driven because of various natural reasons and also 
because of the wind. And hence, they would be changing their place and would be reaching to certain receptor sites. So, these pollutants could be directly emitted, hence primary air pollutants or that could be formed because of the interaction through these primary air pollutants because of certain conducive atmosphere and hence that could be secondary air pollutants. We can consider the category of the sources. So, say there could be certain specific plus. For example, if we consider certain industry, if we consider certain say incinerator plus, if we consider certain say storage tank, if there is certain chimney stack. So, it has got certain specific footprint and hence such sources can be considered as point sources. As we consider the combination of such small stationary sources as such, they will be causing the emission over that particular area. Say for example, if we consider a particular township which is using and burning fuel over the various parts, so that area as such can be considered as single source and hence it would be regarded as area source. Also, as we consider certain road networks, there could be variety of the vehicles, there could be variety of the engines that will be using certain fossil fuel and hence it will be causing the air pollution. So the source as such is not remaining stationary but it is moving along the road, it is moving along the rails, it is moving along certain water current. So under such circumstances as it is moving from place to place, it is regarded as mobile source. Also, if we consider the combination of this particular point sources, say for example, if we consider the number of the industries which are situated along a road site, then even that source can be regarded as line source. So it could be point source, area source, line source. As it is moving, it could be mobile source. In addition to the natural sources, the way we considered about the volcanoes desert on the previous slide. Here, as we consider this particular variety of the sources, for a particular region, their combinations could be emitting the pollutants with different concentrations. So the way you see here, that particular say, for this particular data, for that particular region, it is valid. And the contribution of the dust, contribution of the industry is to the extent of 45%, whereas West burning is causing 17%, transport sector causing 14%. So this particular pollution level may not be constant for even a given region because the atmosphere is dynamic. Say for example, if we consider certain metro city, this particular say uh, transport sector could be contributing to 15 to 70%. If we consider the typical meteorological conditions, the contribution of say that stable burning could be as low as 1%, it could be as high as 42%. So what I mean to say is, here in line with the category of the sources, we have to consider the contribution of that particular sources which will be valid for that particular region only. Hence, it is necessary to have the emission inventory. So this emission inventory is nothing but a study conducted to determine the emission of 
various pollutants or specific pollutants for a given region. So, based on the basic objective, it could be restricted for certain specific source, for example, vehicular emission or otherwise, say, whatever the combustion that is occurring at the various places in various forms, the generation of the carbon monoxide from all the sources. The preparation of the inventory is key to define strategic policy. It needs the detailed knowledge of various emission factors and in order to determine this particular emission inventory, one follows top-down and bottom-up approach. In order to prepare this particular emission inventory, generation of the emission factors is important phenomenon. So, the emission factor can be considered as average rate of the emission of the pollutant per unit of the activity data or for a particular process or say it can also be expressed per person. This emission factor is a typical emission from a particular source based on the specific pollutant, the type of the processes, stage of the technology and also the pollutant factors that are affecting the emission. So, say in order to understand the concept of the emission factor, you can think of this emission can be determined by product of emission factor and certain activity data. So, NOx emissions per distance, oxides of the nitrogen emitted per kilometer of the distance traveled by certain vehicle. You can easily understand now, it will be different from two-wheeler, it will be different for three-wheeler, it will be different for four-wheeler. Here comes the emission inventory. We wish to, we can focus on selected source or combination of the sources and hence the use of top-down and bottom up approaches. Say, another example of this particular emission, say for this SOX emission per amount of, per unit of copper that is smelted. The pollution that is caused because of combustion of the fossil fuel per person, per vehicle. So all that can be considered as emission factors. Certain examples can be studied in order to understand the concept of emission inventory. As you know, if we consider the ambient atmosphere, the concentration of the pollutant would be very low. And we have to express it, say for example, microgram per cubic meter. However, as we circumscribe more and more area, the pollutant would be voluminous. And hence, there could be a requirement to express this even in gigagrams. So, this multiplied by 1000 metric tons is the total. So, this particular emission level is associated with a particular nation. The contributions are given for, from the domestic, oil industry, transport, etc. So, here this is the typical example of say VOC inventory which is valid for a certain nation. Also, as you see the rightward sketch, here certain non-methyl holotic organic carbons emissions are presented through this pie chart. As you see here, all the nature of the vehicles are taken into account in order to understand the emission of this NMVOC from the total transport sector. So in order to do so, one can consider certain, say, general indicator of the emission. Say for example, total quantity of the fuel that is used for the region, total population, number of the vehicles that are being used. So this will be used as indicator of the emissions. And the emission factors that are developed for that particular region, say for two-wheeler vehicle, 
emission of the oxides of the nitrogen will be x per kilometer x per vehicle x per person through the distance traveled hence that particular product of the emission factor will be giving us the total pollution cost which would be ultimately summed up in order to prepare the inventory emission inventory that would be valid for that particular nation so here two three things are more important we are focusing on the specific pollutant we are focusing on the specific region we are focusing on the specific emitter and also that particular time frame attached with certain meteorological conditions so as we consider this particular sketch say contribution of the india for so2 nox pm 2.5 per source so what would be happening here we will be defining certain region of the interest so say we are simply focusing on the power industry we are focusing simply on process industry we are simply focusing on building infrastructure transport sector so the entire structure that we have will be divided into sub sectors of the interest and the specific information say for example contribution of so2 contribution of nox contribution of pm 2.5 so here we are just acting in the reverse manner and hence it is bottom up approach so this information will be used in order to estimate the emissions in such individual sectors subsequently it is another example of this particular say bottom up approach which is giving us certain data associated with each of that particular states further the sub sector is number of deaths attributable attributable to simply air pollution another sector could be number of deaths attributable to ambient particulate pollution and accordingly further similar case can be considered in the form of loss in terms of money so say millions of dollars attributable to air pollution per capita loss so for a particular country for a particular state we would be working on that particular sub sectors for which the information is collected and would be used in order to understand the total generation pattern i hope the concept of emission inventory is clear to you so this is another example of this particular emission inventory and its application so it can be used for modeling activity it can be used for future projections setting targets in turn it can be used in order to define the policy emission standards to establish the control and similar policies so the lowest case that you see here is giving the exact idea associated with the application of this particular emission inventory as this inventory is developed for certain environmental monitoring emission projections certain industry it can be used for the various purposes like modeling in turn it can be used in order to understand the environmental impact assessment development of the policies to prevent the control emissions also implementations of the emissions prevention prevention and control measures so this process as you see here is dynamic as the data is valid for that certain region for certain specific time frame in order to develop the called the future trends in order to model the data the process of the collection and hence the development of the emission inventory would be continuous process this particular emission
information inventories could be valid for specific region though it could be very small it could be applicable for specific industry it could be applicable for similar industries it could be valid for colonial structure township city and also nation and over the universe so you must be knowing that in order to maintain that proper pollution levels within the reasonable level various treaties are signed internationally so whether that particular treaties are making the fruitful results need to be understood and for that again various inventories could be prepared and also the guidelines in order to establish that particular inventory be given through various manuals so the way you see here i have listed a few of the international inventories which could be used for convention on the long range transboundary air pollution for reporting the national inventories under this kyoto protocol also certain data that is valid for transboundary air pollution for specific region say north east asia by concentrating on certain specific pollutants also certain mel declaration countries which are uh, bangladesh bhutan india pak iran maldives sri lanka nepal the treaty was signed in 1998 so accordingly as we consider such kind of the inventories it will be used with certain specific intention also there could be various organizations who should be working nationally internationally which will be focusing on specific pollutants like greenhouse gases air pollution various air pollutants and greenhouse gases gas and aerosol emissions transboundary air pollutants aerosol characterization experimentation or this role of trace constituents in the atmosphere or to understand the effect of transboundary air pollutants in specific regions this is the overall idea which is giving the picture of emission inventories so thanks for your attention as we move ahead we'll speak about effect of air pollutants so by till then i wish you very happy learning thank you